Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land Place of Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. 44 wins, just go home, dude, just do something. You should already be at home, I guess. <laughs> but do something else. FY68, EC38. No, don't leave. Stick around, but you know. Watch the video intently today, but don't watch for thinking that we're gonna lose. Watch for the life lessons about reality television contained therein, you know? Now, if I'm evaluating this run right off the bat, I actually have no complaints. You might think anti-grav is a complaint, but we just, we're, we're coming hot off the presses. We had a Ludovico technique run last time, and I think that uh, an item that, you know, normally I actually quite like, Ludovico Technique, I thought it was kind of trash for us last time, so I feel like this is implicitly kind of an upgrade. Um, I shouldn't take this, and I'll, I'll tell you that right off the bat. I don't think I should take Hemolacria, um, but I'm doing it not just to flex, but because I think this could provide a good opportunity for us to learn something, and our stats were already good. Like, here's the thing. Hemolacria is not going to take good tiers and make them bad. In my opinion, at least. In, with my limited understanding. I think it will make average tiers into average Hemolacria, above average tiers into above average Hemolacria, etc, etc. So, I think that we basically haven't really faced a positive or a negative. We've merely turned a normal run into a Hemolacria run. So... I think that there's bosses this will benefit us on. Like Ragman, this seems like a pretty good boss for us to be fighting here. We don't need a high rate of fire. What we want is high burst damage so that... Hopefully we can destroy his spiders in like one or two hits. That was very close. We should be a little bit more concerned maybe. But he is almost dead as well. Okay, it... it in my opinion... I find you do more damage to the spiders, okay? <laughs> Hold on. Focus. Every little bit you can sneak in there matters a lot right now. And then see what the heck item we're gonna get here. That's a very nice item. We do have some HP. Please just walk slowly. Until you're part of the, t the turbo team, no running. Walk slowly. We can't get into this area, can we? No, but what we can do is shoot all the fires. Okay, this is dangerous. It's actually, like, insanely dangerous. <laughs> I, am, I am starting to think that that Hemolacria pickup is going gonna, is gonna to haunt us a bit. Here's what I would not do. Do not go to your curse room. I don't know if that was up in the air for people, but if you were considering going to the curse room... If you were considering going to the curse room... Don't. That's alright. It is what it is. We're here. We should focus. Use your noggin. Don't be afraid. And particularly, don't be afraid of using... Um, Book of Belial. Fence available. Let's go check this right room right here. This is a momentum play. The only thing bugging me about Hemolacria right now is when it doesn't kill enemies in one hit. I honestly think we gotta check. This, please God, don't spit out flies or bombs. Oh, it's a full red heart. Baby, I love your way. Aren't you glad I told you to watch this one? Things, things got hot right off the bat. The things I'm going to do for my country. Um, so mom's contacts is, is well worth getting. Now I'll tell you, assuming that is a spirit heart, we probably were going to be fine. Um, but this room just hits different, you know? When you're on zero HP, trying to thread the needle on that becomes a little bit more uh, of a 
of an ask than it does when, you know, oh, I could get hit once and it's not that big of a deal. So, um, that got the blood pumping early here. For the first time in maybe a dozen videos, I really found myself in a position where we were on, uh, death was on call on that one. So, let's use that as an opportunity to remember a couple of things. The first and most prudent one, I think, is that we are not out of the woods. That's a really good opportunity for a demon heart, or for a bone heart. You know, we still very much are... We're, we're the same run, we're composed of the same DNA. Now, as we were when we took all that damage against Ragman. You know, we, we've got a slightly higher rate of fire. And we can freeze enemies in place. But really, I tell this to myself so we can... Stay in front of the... Um, the deal with the devil. See what the deal with the devil has to entail. Because we don't have Curse of the Blind. Wait till you got a good shot lined up. There you go. Okay, terrible item from the boss, or at least not very useful. But Succubus is, is an absolutely beautiful choice. We would be a fool to not, uh, to not pursue that one. Duality would be interesting, but I, honestly, I just don't think we have the... I don't think we got the HP base to make it work. Succubus is going to be super helpful. So is Monkey Paw, honestly. So I, I feel very, very good about the way that things just went for us there. I do think this is one of those floors where we should, with a certain amount of desperation, take our time and uh, try to get either the Demon Heart, and which is not a Demon Heart, it's a Bone Heart. Either the Bone Heart or... Um, the, the, the Tinted Rock. Um, okay, or both in that case. And there's another one right here. And we actually have Golden Key, so we should just pop this down right here. And it did find a second secret room as well, which is very surprising to me. I don't think we need Monkey Paw anymore. Like, that's how quickly things change. We'll blow that up. Unlikely to pay dividends for us. Range down is meaningless for the most part. Um... I, I could go to the curse room. It does feel a little weird because we were spiced up merely recently, but I think if you have the HP, it tends to be a winning play, and that was fine for us. We might as well check our shop. It could be the luck shop with two lucky pennies. It was not. Um, nothing here really interests me all that much. So the bone heart is really the dream come true. The only hard part is that we got to get the bone heart and not get hit immediately after. So, you know, maybe I'll just start with this. It could be sm two two spirit hearts is great. It also could have been small rock, which would have been worth more than a bone heart. But I'm not fully confident if we place the bomb here, we could get that bone heart out without getting hit ourselves. So, we kind of we we split the difference on that one. I'm okay with that. All right, everything is is much much better. Like we're in a completely different universe now than we were when we came down to the second floor. I'll admit, like I it never entered my mind that 100% were toasted, um, but I certainly did start to. I was like, get my affairs in order. <laughs> yeah. This could be a big morale hit. I started building up my own mental fortress. To be like, hey, you know, you're going to experience some light trauma here. Hold it together. We'll get through this together. Now, um, I mean, we still, obviously, we can still suffer on this run. You know, it's very, very, very early in the game. But certainly way better off. Good lord. Anyway. Apart from that, how am I doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for, thank you for asking. Um... Still Monday here. You know we're in a good position in Isaac when I'm recording on a Monday morning. Monday morning is like... I'm really... I'm, I, I talked about it last week, right? But I'm juiced on a Monday. I'm rejuvenated. I'm excited. I, and I like to... I like to be productive. I like to get a good start as early as possible. Um, yo, that's pretty good. 
Normally, we have a backlog in Isaac, so we don't want to record too much of it too early because it's kind of a non-urgent project. But today, I was like, dude, I want to record some Isaac because we got a heck of a streak going on. I'm having a great time. I think that enthusi enthusiasm shows and... Uh, it's, it's a, you know, a high point. You know, we, we've we gone through some lulls in terms of, like, Isaac... I don't want to say watchability, because I think the series has always had a certain amount of watchability, but, you know, we're in this, like, interim period while we wait for the DLC, and it's... I don't know if we need it, honestly. I think we'd rather get something that's immediately beneficial for us. Like that, for example. Um... But yeah, like the, the DLC, I think it's fair to say, is taking longer than expected. I mean, I don't know, it was announced like two years ago, three years ago at this point. I'm not saying, you know, they're dragging their heels. I'm just saying it's taken a long time. Um, so here we are, still uh, grinding it out and doing our best to give people a, a reason to continue to be excited about Isaac in 2020. So to... To have that is is a very nice position to be in. We're not always there, you know, and it, it's always, you know, it's on the edge. You know, you could always just spawn with one HP and get hit on the, the second room. So, I don't take it for granted in the least. But we're doing great stuff here. Apart from that, what am I going to do today? We got an NLSS, of course. I don't know what we're going to play. We've been playing a lot of golf lately. But... Straight up, it's been kind of uh, I don't want to say it's been a dry period for games, but, you know, I, now that I do videos uh, for Northern Lion Tries every single day, keep in mind, whenever I say it's dry for games, I mostly mean, like, it's dry for the games that I want to play, not games in general. Because, um, you know, sometimes people have been like, oh, man, there's been nothing that's come out this year until, you know, maybe, like, the Animal Crossing and Resident Evil 3 and, you know... Final Fantasy VII Remake will have come out by the time this video goes out, and etc, etc. Um, anyway. Uh, you know, when people have been saying that, I've been like, yo, you guys have been missing out. Exit the Gungeon was good. One Step from Eden has been a great time. Uh, Stone Shard has been one of this year's big surprises so far, and, you know, yada, yada, yada. But it's, it depends what you want to play. At the same time, when I've been like, yo, what's my favorite game of the year so far? Well, until Animal Crossing, it was probably uh, Dreams, maybe? I thought Dreams was really good, and, uh, well, obviously. I don't know if I have the necessary tools to understand what's happening in, in Dreams, <laughs> or to take advantage of everything, but just playing the stuff that people made was amazing. And people are like, no, Dreams is like, sure, maybe it's fine, but like, you're completely ignoring Call of Duty Warzone. You're absolutely right. I am. So it really depends on what you're interested in. But, but for the indie scene, it's been a little dry for maybe like a week. And a week's not a long time, but I'm, I'm more attuned to the, the ebbs and flows in the indie community now that I'm really paying attention to Steam releases like every single day. So, I do need something for Northern Land Tries a little later today, but you know, we're, we're now at the point where I... Normally I go to Steam, and I go... Because I, I know people like to peek behind the curtain sometimes, based on that Isaac episode I put up where I accidentally didn't change the title, and it was like ABP, which is Afterbirth Plus, 032902 Precaution. People were like, what what does it mean? Well, I'll tell you what it means. ABP is Afterbirth Plus. It's just a, a tag so I know how to identify it in the video manager. I think this is what we want, honestly. I don't know if I want to reroll the whole run, but uh, obviously we will. Whether or not I want to, we will. Um, and then 0329. That's when recorded, so that it was recorded on March 29th, which probably seems ancient now, but at one time, we were living it. Walked right into that. And, uh, what's the O2? That means it's the second Isaac episode I recorded that day. There you go. Sometimes I'll put an extra tag in. Needs editing. That's, uh, for example, when I go to the door to get a delivery and, uh, forget to unmute myself afterwards. Not that that would ever happen. Multiple times in the space of a single week. Um, there you go. But now, usually I go to Steam. I see, well, I go to my inbox. I see what's in the inbox. And then, you know, if there's nothing really compelling in the inbox, 
I might take a second pass to scrape for stuff that might not look that compelling, but could actually be fun to play. A lot of Northern Lion tries I thought would be garbage because the games were not traditionally suitable. Ended up being very well liked and, and fun to play as well. Um, dump it. Then I'll go to Steam New Releases if I don't see anything there. Game Pass, Epic Game Store, Itch.io. PlayStation Plus, please God, is anything out there? That's kind of where we're at. We're at the Game Pass level right now, so it's not quite God or Damarong, but <laughs> we're getting a little close. But hopefully, hope, I mean, stuff comes out of nowhere all the time, right? Like, one step from Eden, I got that code in my inbox maybe like three weeks ago, four weeks ago. And I was like, I'll give it a shot. I'm not sure. I've never played Mega Man Battle Arena, but maybe this will be cool. And I ended up being like, well, this is not just cool. This is like, maybe. It's either my favorite or my second favorite indie so far this year, I think. But, there, I mean, there's a lot of great options so far. Anyway, we talking about games. No, no, no. We talk exclusively about Animal Crossing. On this channel, we stan Animal Crossing. Stanimal Crossing. I had a heartbreaking moment um, in Animal Crossing. I've talked a little bit extensively about my nature uh, of, of my relationship with Flip, the jock monkey in Animal Crossing. And... Hold on. Cool run. Uh, very powerful run. This might be worth sticking to, dude. Um, Flip, I've, I've gone out hunting for medicine in the dead of night to save him from an infection. I have, uh, I've given my all to that guy. He came to me, he had like, not tears in his eyes, but was clearly in a melancholic state. I said, what's wrong, Flip? He said, I've been thinking about leaving the island. I'm just not sure people like me here. That, in and of itself, almost broke my heart. It's like how you know in a, in a movie, if like a human dies, let me rephrase. If, like, an adult dies, you're like, that's sad. If a kid dies or faces serious injury, let, let's just take this, because I think this is the run we want to stick with, honestly. You're like, that's unconscionable. That guy's a real villain. But if an animal gets killed, you're like, that guy's Beelzebub, you know? The John Wick philosophy. I think that an Animal Crossing villager being sad is actually sadder than when Theon Greyjoy kills John Wick's dog in John Wick 1. Sincerely. They're both sad. I want that to be very well known. But one of my villagers coming up to me, because they're so innocent, right? They haven't done anything wrong. One of my villagers coming up to me and being like, I'm not sure if people like me here. It, it just breaks your heart. I immediately, as quickly as possible, I said to Flip, Flip, who hurt you? Tell me who hurt you. I will end them. I will get Isabel to banish them from this island. Don't forget who's the mayor. But I told him to stick around. I said, Flip, this island wouldn't be the same without you. He said, well, okay, Rerack. Help. <laughs> that was so close. If you like me, then I guess I'll stay. And now he's he's making his way on the island. So it's like, uh, you know, it's a feel-good story. Don't get me wrong. But it was almost a feels-badman story. I was, I was happy to have the opportunity to make Flip feel good to be on my island. Apart from that, you know, I've, I've actually, believe it or not, I know I don't seem like the guy. But I've started decorating my Animal Crossing town and village the uh, uh, sorry house and village because i will say like decorating your house i get it's a little weird because like you know my first hunch for sure i don't think that's gonna help us unfortunately is like why even decorate your house now that's the good stuff like you it looks nice but like you're gonna make a whole kitchen and then people will be like okay make me some bread and you'll be like well none of this is actually functional you can sit in the chair but that's about it but I've actually, I've found myself enjoying it. I'm like, this is my leisure room. You walk in, there's a nice rug on the ground. On that rug is a large table. It has a Nintendo Switch and a large jug of protein powder and a blender bottle. <laughs> then there's a 
on the in the corner there's a little kitchenette with a metal can of coffee and an espresso machine next to it and of course my large personal stereo that is always playing it's it's kk cruising now i have one room that's kind of like it's a little kitchen why do i need a kitchen when i also have a kitchenette look I don't have an answer for your question. You got me. He boomed me. Straight up. Um, and then I have one room that's just a bunch of turnips on the ground. But, you know, we're, <laughs> we'll work on it. I still, though, like, I, I don't understand how to decorate my town. I have different design sensibilities than a lot of Animal Crossing characters. And I, or players, I should say. And I know this because sometimes when I play on stream, people get visibly, like, upset with me. Like, I placed all of my Animal Crossing villagers' homes in pretty close proximity. Like, they've got front yards. They've got backyards. They got, like, you know, alleys between the homes where you can put a birdhouse or something. But they're really close to one another and also really close to the store, resident services, and the museum. I think that because I live in a city, that is my platonic ideal of, of living, you know? I want to be close enough to my neighbors that they build cool restaurants near me from the before times when we were allowed to leave our homes. Um, but I don't want to be so close that when they throw a quarantine party that I can actually hear their music. Which is hard sometimes because apparently subwoofers have been on sale for, oh, I don't know, two decades. Uh, regardless, though, people are like, why don't you give your villagers any room? I don't know. Like... I mean, I've talked about it with Simvicta. You know, sometimes in GeoGuessr, we'll be in, like, Hong Kong or something like that. And he'll be like, I could never live here. And I just look at it and I'm like, this looks pretty nice. <laughs> it's different strokes for different folks, right? So I, I put all of my uh, villagers in, like, very close proximity. So that if they want to throw a party, they don't have to walk too far. Or get in their uh, gas-powered vehicles and, you know, drive 25 minutes. To go to the grocery store. Anyway. Um, people have been a little bit rattled by that. But I also, I, I face a weird conundrum sometimes in Animal Crossing. Where I'm like, you know, here, here's how it'll go. Hey there, Rerack. Hey, Cottontail. I heard you want to get K.K. Slider to play in our village. Well, in order to do that, well, first they go, K.K. Slider's my favorite, etc., etc. But in order to do that, we've really got to make the place look more beautiful. Here's a piece of furniture for you. Why don't you put it down and make our village more, you know, picturesque? And then it's like a gasoline pump. And I'm like, where? I have this idyllic island paradise. And you give me a retro gas pump. And you're like, put it down. Hey, have you put it down yet? Hey, have you put down that gas pump? Why would you ever do that? <laughs> have you put down that, that eyesore? That abomination? I don't know where to put it. I don't think finger is good enough for us here. We, we got enough leverage to swing for the fences. I will. I will. That didn't hurt our rate of fire too much. Now just don't take Ludovico and we should be good to go. Terrible. Um, oh, Hold on here. I was going to say we can get the boss rush, but or teleport out of boss rush, but obviously that's not in the cards for us. Now, why did I take teleport 2.0 if I'm not going to use it? Can I level with you? The reason I took teleport 2.0 was not to use it. I'll still use it as a teleport when, when the mood strikes, I guess. However, the main reason I took teleport 2.0 was to not go so deep on the D-Infinity, because I know myself and I have no self-control when it comes to that item. It was mostly to keep myself honest enough that... Uh, I wouldn't re-roll myself into oblivion. <laughs> and to that end, it's doing exactly what I asked. But yeah, I just don't, I don't know where to, and I, I've actually, so I go on the Animal Crossing subreddit a couple times a week, and I've seen the same complaint. People are like, to get five stars, I have to strip my island of all of its natural beauty and put down a bunch of garbage on the ground. And then people are like, yeah. That's what I did, and then as soon as K.K. Slider had his performance, I just uh, picked up all the stuff and put it in storage. I understand. Different design philosophies. I'm very much, I'm an organic Marie Kondo, sort of, uh, like, that's the way I live my lifestyle. Kate mentioned it, she came to my island to buy turnips, and she was like, your island is designed in your image. Like, this is what your life would look like, you know, if we didn't live together, if you weren't married. I was like, yeah, I think you're right. 
my my room is like it's a bed, it's a table, there's an espresso machine, and like a shelf. I'm not I've seen the images that are like, you know, men really live like this and they think it's okay and it's just like a couch and a TV and no other furniture. I'm not quite that bad, but <laughs> like I'm <laughs> I, I I enjoy that minimalist lifestyle, you know? I like open space in my home. Not necessarily a large home, but I like I like open space. I guess that's all I can say about that, really. I see some people's Animal Crossing, like, bedroom, and it's, like, wall-to-wall -wall stuff, and I'm like, ah, it's not for me. But that's the beauty of the game. Yo, here a font, very clutch here. We shouldn't need it, like, to be honest with you, we should be very much safe on this run. We, we've got, like, a very traditional kind of safe situation, I guess is a good way to describe it. We have a lot of HP, we have a very above-average DPS, maybe short of elite, but pretty close. Anyway, I guess that's my, my question for today. How are you designing your Animal Crossing villages? Because I'll level with you, and this is not something that everybody agrees with. What I love about the game is you can play it in your own way. I love playing the game in single player. I've talked about it in other series, so I don't want to belabor the point too much. I love playing it in single player. I hate... Um, going to other people's islands, and I hate other people, except for my wife visiting my island. I really just like playing the game for me, you know? Um, so I don't see that many other islands, except in, like, screenshots. Anybody else rocking that Marie Kondo lifestyle? I know depending on when this video comes out, if this video comes out on a Monday, you'll be like, my house is decorated in turnips. I'll be like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> but one day, have you thought about it? One day you're gonna be like, I don't need any more bells. So what are we gonna do then? You know, you're, you're probably not going to run the turnip game, you know, into into November. What, what's your island going to look like then? Interested to hear. And in real life as well, you know? What's your, what's your de design philosophy like? I think it'll depend a lot on your age. My design philosophy when I was in university was like maximalistic in the sense that if anybody was ever like, Hey, we got like a free piece of junk furniture we don't want anymore? Do you want it? I was like, yeah. You want an old massage chair that is has a frayed power cord and was left out in the rain for anyone to pick up who wanted it? Absolutely. What's the worst that could happen? You want an, you want an air hockey table that no longer has air pumping through it? Of course. That that would that would strike my fancy quite greatly right now. <laughs> that's the that's the dorm lifestyle. You're late. I, I did that in, in my first year of university. You know what would really, you know, this dorm room's amazing. You know what would really kick it off? A couch. <laughs> A place to sit that is not on your bed. Hey, we gotta go to their room. They got a couch. It's crazy in there. I didn't live in a nice dorm. I went to a nice school. The dorms were like pretty ancient. I lived in it, you know, with the with the roommate, obviously. Very little privacy. I mean, no privacy. But I think it's a good experience as well. If you if you can serve, because you hear horror stories about, you know, dorm mates all the time. If you and your dorm mate can make it through like the eight months of the school year without having serious interpersonal drama, or you can have that drama but still, you know, be friends afterwards. I think you should get, like, that should go on your permanent record. Should be like, this guy might not be perfect, but it's copacetic. Just my, just my hunch, though. It's been a while, you know, I haven't been in that, uh, haven't been in that position for quite some time. And it's better this way. Living alone is just better. Not alone, but like, you know, with perhaps, like, a spouse. <laughs> <laughs> or one roommate that you're like, you know, you, you share the same priorities. Because I'll level with you. Like, you know, if we're talking about like NLSS members, I wouldn't want to live with most of them. Not because of the fact that like I think they're bad people or, or even bad roommates. Because I think we have different styles, you know? Like different styles of living. 
Like, I think Malf would be a... It's probably more of a situation where, like, I would be okay living with Malf. He's a very tidy individual for sure, and he likes to cook. Malf would probably think twice about living with me, because I think my cleanliness standards are, you know, not destitute, but perhaps lower than his. Um, I don't know, maybe... Maybe we're closer to on par now, but at, definitely at 19, he was he was more uh, clean-oriented than I was. Um, and like, I definitely, I think that's as close as I would get to living with somebody on the LSS. That doesn't mean we can't be friends, it's just like, you know, living in, in one place with one another. I don't think that's in the cards for us. Plus, the older you get, the more inflexible you get, right? I really think, like, living with friends is almost the same as working with friends. I did it in university. Um, and, you know, it, it kind of... So, like, in my second year of university, I lived with six other people. And uh, then two of those people took, like, internships for their third year, so they were away. So then I moved into a house with four other people that were from the first house. And honestly, like, I made lasting friendships that I will maintain for the rest of my life. But then there's like one guy that we all lived with that we're, none of us have ever spoken to since graduation. That guy, and it wasn't even like, oh, he was a jerk. We just had different living styles, you know? He was much quieter. In hindsight, he was pretty much right. <laughs> he was much quieter and like, you know, in first year, freshman year, you tend to maybe go a little wild because you know, you're, you're, it's your first time away from home maybe. And, uh, you know, we were all like, yeah, we're all on the same page. And then he met his girlfriend, and they really, like, pretty quickly settled into a more domestic-style routine. Whereas, you know, in second and third year, we were still kind of living that freshman life for a long time. So we had, there, were, there was some friction there. You know, it's the same as business, I think. You can enter business with friends, and, you, you know, if it works out well, that's awesome. But you are putting something on the line, I think. You know, I think you're always, you're always running the risk that, uh, you know, something that happens in a business context will affect your friendship. I don't really have too many thoughts on that, to be honest, you know? It, it, it all comes back to uh, ooh, the, the thoughts that uh, Dan and I had on Check the Wire, which is, you know, I work with a lot of my friends. Occasionally, there's a little bit of friction. You just talk it out as, as soon as possible, you know? If you, if you let it fester, it becomes much more difficult to deal with, but... Sometimes I apologize, and I know this came up uh, before, and some people very much disagreed with me, and you're entitled to, even though I still hold my opinion to be, you know, what works for me. Um, but I, I apologize all the time for things that I don't actually feel are my fault. But then sometimes, like, a month later... Let me put it this way. I have never in my life apologized for something quite liberally. And then, you know, a month later, been like, man, I really wish I didn't apologize. Most of the time, it smooths it over and you're not even thinking about it a month later. But then some of the time, when I apologize, I'm like, eh, he's being a baby, I shouldn't apologize. Um, but then I do anyway. And then a month later, I'm like, dude, with the benefit of hindsight, he was totally right. <laughs> I'm glad I apologized when I did. As a result, this didn't get dragged out longer than necessary, and I still learned my lesson eventually, you know? So that's why I'll always... Why not? Eee, there's a good reason why not. So it, it's modestly spiced. We should be okay, but 6 HP is slightly low, but we, we'll probably be fine here. But yeah, my advice, you, you know, the best thing you can do is get out in front of stuff. You got a problem, handle it. If you don't have a problem, but things feel a little off, Ask if there's a problem. This is uh, a, an absolutely cursed assortment of items. With things being so dangerous. Uh, well, on the precipice of danger. I dare not take any of the meme items right now. I dare not. Okay, that's, that's my bad. Try not to let... You know, one damage, okay, it happens. Try not to let one damage become two damage, become six damage, become, you know, one tequila, two te tequila, three tequila floor. 
I can't believe. Oh my god, we actually got the HP from Virus, which is hilarious. I thought there was like a, probably like a 5% chance of that happening, so that's a good get for us. I, I will say, can I tell you there's something a little bit more troubling for me, and it's a common thread amongst the past two runs. And that's, uh, I'm really surprised that both of our previous two runs kind of like were strong and then started to fall apart a little bit. Obviously, this one was a little bit more questionable at the beginning, but I think that's that's the kind of thing that you should concern yourself with, is like, hey, maybe it's just, you know, variance, but maybe there's like a common element that you're losing a little bit of focus as the run goes on today. This would be a good time to recognize that habit and, and start to get out in front of it before it really could could become a serious problem. So... This one was not as automatic as a lot of our recent runs, which, can I tell you if there's one major mistake we made here? We actually should have just stuck with the D-Infinity. I think that would have, uh... That one hurt. I think sticking with the D-Infinity would have been, uh, a solid move, because we... Really, if, if you have the confidence... Come on. If you have the confidence to roll the D-Infinity, you're gonna get something amazing. It's just a matter of time before you get the shine. You know what I mean? Uh, I actually got flabbergasted there. In the literal definition of the word. If there is... <laughs> my flabbers were gasted, dude. I thought I hit him with a bomb to the face and he didn't even respond. It was like, you know, trying to punch Thanos. What happened there? That was not... I've, I've lost all confidence in myself as a result of that one. We should still be fine. Luckily, getting some HP drops. Keep in mind, like... There's a lot of actionable feedback on this one, to be straight up with you. Dude, that's what we should be using Pony for. You poison them and then the virus can hook you up. Okay, there's the Emperor. Um... But there's a lot of actionable feedback. Like, here's one. It, it is hard to follow this advice, but we didn't have to take that too hard um, Curse of the Blind Devil deal that ended up being worthless. Now, to be honest, I hesitate to even mention that because most of the time, a two heart Devil deal is not going to be useless. Most of the time, it's going to be transformative in a positive direction. But maybe having a little bit more care around those uh, sorts of issues would be good. And then also, don't, don't fear the D-Infinity. I mean, come on. We made it through this one, but it was probably harder than it needed to be. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya.